What's up, guys? Michael Corsentino for BehindTheShutter.com and Shutter Magazine with my August 2019 lighting tutorial. This month, we're going to look at three of my favorite ways to turn bad light into great light. I'm going to walk you through three different locations that were all shot on the same day um, and talk to you about problem solving. That essentially is what you do on basically every shoot. Okay, so and when we talk about bad light, what exactly does that mean? Well, bad light can be a variety of things. Um, it can be, uh, oftentimes when we talk about bad light, we're talking about bright sunlight and how to mitigate that light and how to tame that light um, because really bright sunlight, harsh overhead sunlight, like midday sunlight will create really harsh shadows that are very unflattering. And that's just one scenario, okay? Uh, the images that were captured on this particular day are all captured with an absence of light, okay? The sun was not out. It was very overcast, which is a whole host of other problems that need to be solved. So that's really what we're going to look at today. So this, these tutorials are really, uh, this tutorial is an outgrowth of the three classes that I taught at Shutterfest this year. Um, and they all had different topics, but there was one unifying theme, which was turning bad light into good light, or great light, as I like to say. Okay, so we're going to look at, as I said, three different locations, and I've got some before and afters here. These are the sh shoots that we're going to look at. So we're going to start with this one, where we're going to go from this image on the left to this image on the left again, and then to our final on the right. Okay, so that's going to be the first one that we're going to look at. This image is, this is, uh, shoot is actually our last shoot that we're going to look at. Uh, which is uh, going to talk about how to overcome overcast light. Obviously, on the left is where we started out, and on the right is where we finished. So I'm going to walk you, take you from point A to point B. Um, and then lastly, we're going to look at this shoot, which we did uh, by the trains out there at the Shutterfest location uh, in St. Louis. Awesome. If you guys haven't been, you guys definitely need to go to Shutterfest. It's held at Union Station, a really awesome location in St. Louis every year. So I hope to see you there next year. All right. And uh, again, we're going to look at how we went from uh, the image on the left to the image on the right. All right. Let's look at our first location for the day and our first set of problems and how we overcame them. So as I said, this is an overcast day in St. Louis and it, at this particular uh, location we had rain to deal with. So what I did was I put the model under an overhang in order to shield her and the rest of the class from the rain. Um, but as you can see here, what's happening is we have uh, we're trying to balance and uh, the exposure between the background and the foreground and if we balance one then the other goes out of balance so as you can see on the left in order to have our model properly exposed our background is completely overexposed and as we move from left to right in order to properly expose our background all the way on the right we've got the background properly exposed but our model is now completely underexposed so what we're doing is, you know, we're fixing one problem but creating another, and that's what we need to fix, okay? So basically what I've done here is I've set up an aperture that I'm happy with because I don't want to start stopping down my aperture in order to control the light. So I'm using shutter speed to control the ambient. And again, this is just for ambient light. Right now I'm only working with ambient light. So I'm using my shutter speed to lessen the amount of ambient light that we have on the scene in order to bring that background back into proper exposure. But when I'm doing that, I am underexposing the model. And the reason that I'm not using my aperture to do that is because I don't want to stop down the aperture. That's going to bring in more information from the background to create a very distracting image. I want to keep my aperture fairly open so that I'm blurring out the background and focusing the attention on the subject, okay? But And then use my shutter speed in order to control the amount of ambient light. And when I do that, uh, obviously, because we're only working with one source of light at the moment, my model is being is becomes underexposed, right? Uh, and oftentimes, what you'll have to do is use a really fast shutter speed when you have a lot of light in order to do that. And when you when you use a fast shutter speed and you try to introduce flash, fill flash, which is what we're going to do, you end up with uh, flash that gets cut off because you're in you're you're using a 
shutter speed that um, exceeds the maximum sync speed for your camera. So what you need to do is use high speed sync and that's what we did here. So let's take a look at the, the next progression. Okay, so we started off on the left, we started to move from the middle image, we're getting a little bit more, we're holding our background a little bit more, we're increasing our shutter speed, and finally, on the right, we've now we've got a good background, properly exposed, but our subject is completely underexposed. Now we turn on our flash, all right? And here we go. So we're using fill flash now to fill in our model and properly expose her. And for doing that, we're not touching anything on the camera. All that we're doing is, and again, I'm working here in manual, so all I'm doing is I'm just adjusting the power of the strobe. Okay, so this is how, this, the first tip is basically how to balance the foreground and the background when they're falling out of balance. And you can do that using high-speed sync if you need to. If you, if you have to use a shutter speed that exceeds your maximum sync speed for your camera, then you're going to be in high-speed sync. Some strobes will automatically switch over and detect that. Some you need to set that, but that's how you're going to do it. If you're anywhere above 125th to 200th, to 200th of a second, 1 200th of a second, you're going to be in high-speed sync. So just so if, if you start getting black bars on the bottom of your frame, you'll know that that's what's happening. Switch on high-speed sync and you'll be okay. So uh, you can see here now we've got everything in balance. So I wanted to show you the straight out of the camera shot and then the shot with some post-processing on there and some color grading. All right, so that's our first tip. Fill flash, high speed sync, that's going to help you balance your foreground and your background. Now that we've got our background and foreground exposures balanced, we can swap in and out models, we can add additional lights as we've done here. Um, basically we have a lot of flexibility to move freely throughout the scene because everything is now in balance. So I want to talk a little bit about the equipment that was used. It's going to be the same throughout all three of these shoots. Here I'm shooting with uh, the strobe that I'm using is an Ellen Chrome ELB 400, uh, one light with an Ellen Chrome uh, 27.5 deep octa. It's a small octa bank that, and I'm using it on a light pole, having an assistant hold uh, basically a paint pole with a little Casey uh, paint pole adapter on there so you can put a light on top of it. Um, and that's it. And we've also got a second light, which I'm going to cover that later, but a very simple setup that provides you a lot of flexibility and mobility. In our next location, you can see just how flat and boring the overcast light is. Again, we have no sort of direct sunlight. Everything is cloud cover. It's very overcast. The light is very cold. Um, we'll talk about how to overcome that in our next location. But in this location, basically what I want to do right off the bat is I want to punch up the drama, punch up the contrast, um, and create a more compelling and interesting looking image. You can see on the left how flat and boring the light is and on the right how we're able to really take it and heighten the contrast and heighten the drama uh, by introducing some strobe and uh, you know monkeying around with the exposure. Right. So basically what I do as we did with the last shot, but in this case I'm not doing it to control the background uh, as we did with the last location rather, I'm not doing it to control the hold the background exposure to balance the background and foreground exposure. Now what I'm doing is I'm uh, underexposing the ambient light in order to to boost the contrast and drama and create a more interesting looking image. So what I do first is establish an ambient exposure that is typically underexposed by a stop or two, which I've done here. Um, and then I introduce fill flash, okay, in order to balance the exposure in order to bring the subject back into proper exposure, I should say. So you can see here, and I also am going to add a second light, which is really what the second tip is here that I wanted to turn you on to. All right, so let's take a look. So here you can see I've, I'm using something called cross light. This is straight out of the camera. I am using strobe now. Uh, I have underexposed the ambient light. And I, again, I'm doing that just to create, to introduce, to increase contrast and drama. You can also use this technique to hold the sky. If you have cloud cover that you want to include, and you want to bring in the sky and kind of hold it so it doesn't blow out, but we're not doing that uh, in this particular shot. So what I'm using here is something called cross light. So I've got my key light is on camera right, and camera left, I'm introducing a strobe in order to create a layered lighting effect, okay? So basically it's called cross light because each light opposes 
uh, the other. They're in the opposite direction of each other. So I've got a light on the right as my key light and a light camera left, which is my fill light, and that is creating the highlight on the hair. All right, um, and so two lights is gonna give you a more layered look, obviously, than one light. Um, and we're gonna uh, continue this effect in our next location and really punch it up even more with the addition of some gels to add back warmth, you can see here. Uh, I'm doing that here, but it's not as apparent an effect as it will be in the, in the next location. So, I, so here, I just wanted to show you uh, uh, before the post-processing and after the post-processing. So here is the straight out of the camera, and here's with the post-processing and color grading applied. All right, let's look at our next location. Okay, so here again, we have the problem of overcast light. You can see on the left, uh, before we introduce any strobe, before we can make any corrections, we've got a very boring and flat light, very cold light as well. So uh, basically, like in our last shot, what I'm going to do is introduce fill flash. I'm going to underexpose so I can hold the sky, introduce fill flash, which you're seeing on the right. And then what I want to do is introduce a second light and add colored gel to that light. I'm using CTO gel. So this is tip number three. In order to add back warmth when you're dealing with overcast days, the light is very blue, the light is very cold, you don't have the warm light of the sun, basically what you can do is reintroduce that warmth using something called color temperature orange gel on your strobe. And I'm using that right now on the second light, the hair light, the accent light, which is camera left. Um, and then on my key light, I'm not using it. You could if you wanted to, but typically I, I like to do this in post, is add back a little warmth in post, which you're seeing on the right, on the final image, okay? So uh, basically we've taken everything from our image over here on camera, uh, camera, sorry, the image on the left, uh, where you can see everything is completely flat and boring and kind of uninspiring to our final over here on the right where we've got our we've underexposed so you can see we've held the sky we've added our key light um, and then we've added in our accent light where we've got CTO gel on there to add back some warmth and then we've added color grading for additional warmth overall so those are the three tips on how to um, how to turn bad light into great light. So again, just to recap, bad light can really be a, a number of things. It can be really harsh, overcast sunlight where you're going to employ either open shade or create open shade using a scrim or a diffusion panel. Or it can be overcast light where you don't have any sunlight and you have to solve that problem, which we've looked at three different scenarios to do that. Now I want you to keep in mind, bad light can also be any light that is inconsistent with the quality of light that you have in mind for your particular shoot. So you might not want open and pleasing light. You might want something more harsh. Maybe you need to create that. Uh, maybe the opposite is true. Maybe you have very um, harsh light, but you want to create something very soft and open and airy. So it, again, it can be a number of things, but you need to be able to solve those particular problems. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this month. Come on back next month. Also, check out the print edition of Shutter Magazine for August. It's got more on this particular topic and tons of other great tutorials from industry leaders in photography. So that's going to wrap it up. I will see you next month here at BehindTheShutter.com and Shutter Magazine.